Hey, what's up, JoJo in the morning family? Hope everybody is having a really good day. It's Wednesday. Hey, look at this. Got my new roar cap. Oh, yeah. Hey, sometimes y'all might need to cruise on in to Texarkana for a service at Roar Church, Texarkana. We're about to start having some uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning services, kind of like a revival weekends once a month. So you guys can come on in, spend a weekend with us. We always have a good time in the presence of the Lord. Always got powerful worship, powerful ministry, altar ministry, prophetic ministry, healing ministry. A lot of good stuff going on. Let's get into this. I'm going to give you some scripture. All right. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Towards you. Towards you. Okay. What does that mean? God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Let's go back to the first scripture we shared on Monday. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God is thinking about you. He's got good. He's got pleasurable. He's got amazing. He's got just thoughts towards you to move you forward to advance the God agenda, kingdom agenda over your life, okay? And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have all sufficiency in all things. Now, what does that mean? That there is no lack in the kingdom of God. There's no lack in the kingdom of God. One of the biggest problems I see with so many people is so many people have a poverty mindset a lack mindset. They just, they're in lack. They're in lack spiritually. They're in lack financially. They're in lack in their health. A lot of times people are in lack in the knowledge of the word of God. And I'm not talking about just pastors. I, I, yeah, the, I've never seen more ministers who don't understand the full realm of the scriptures according to the kingdom of God. They don't understand the power and the authority that we're given in the things of the Lord. Let me finish that scripture. It was so good, I couldn't even finish it. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. That you would have abundance in every good work. You know when the Bible talks about overflow, you need to overflow. That means you're so full of the things of God that you overflow to everybody around you. That's what this right here is talking about, that you would have abundance for every good work, that God's grace would abound towards you so you would overflow and have abundance in every single good work, every good thing that you do. But a lot of people don't like it. But you know what's crazy to me is how many people don't believe in abundance. They don't believe in prosperity. They don't believe in the advancing of the kingdom of God. I don't know what Bible they're reading, okay? I don't think they fully understand what the scriptures are talking about. See, we got to understand there is no lack in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? It did not say in heaven as it is in earth. No, no, no. There's no lack in the kingdom. So the kingdom citizens should have no lack. We should lack no authority. We should lack no blessing. We should lack no favor. We should have the favor and the blessing and the abundance of the things of God. And it starts with an abundance mindset. Wherever your thoughts lead, everything in your life follows. What if it all leads to this right here? You know, one of the... the, the the, the things that I love to do uh, is I love reading the Word of God 
with an open mind. Hey, Nate Johnson had a word recently talking about we need to unlearn some things that we've been taught in the church. I remember one of the funnest stories. I was preaching this church. It's a good church full of good people. Good sized church, about 400 people. And I was preaching. Deacons were doing this. I, I, I knew the church. I knew who the pastor, the youth pastor, young adult, worship pastor, deacons. When I was preaching, I knew, I knew I had a meeting coming when church was over. When church was over, the youth pastor came up and said, can I talk to you in the, in the back office when everybody leaves? I said, yeah, you and all the pastors and all the deacons, I'm sure y'all want to meet with me. He's like, yeah, we do. So we go back to the, I've had a lot of these meetings, by the way. And so we go into the back room. One of the head deacons, he started talking to me in his King James Version voice. By the time he got done talking, he was in the Passion Translation voice. And he said, you know, Jojo, I didn't agree with hardly anything you said tonight. I said, okay. He said, the only problem I have is every single thing that you said, you backed it up with scripture. I said, yes, sir. And then you said, when the kingdom of God is properly taught, the kingdom will manifest. Yes, sir, I sure did. He said, we had salvations. We sure did. We had a lot of rededications. Yes, we did. And we had a whole lot of people healed. Yes, we did. So according to what you taught, the kingdom manifested. And I said, it did. And then this with the youth pastor, super cool guy, I said, you know, I was taught, and he, he, he said what well, he was taught, it went against what I said. And I said, show me that in the scripture. They couldn't find it. I said, Google it. I couldn't find it. And I said, see, gentlemen, you've been taught by good men, good, kind-hearted men who fell out of love with this right here. They've kind of wandered away from the word over the years. One of the deacons said, well, I was raised in a church and my pastor used to say, and I said, that's a good saying and a good quote, but it's not in here. And they were like, wow. They said, we haven't seen this many healings in probably the past three years in one night. And they were super receptive. See, one thing I've learned over the years, I've had guest speakers in and I remember the first time I had a guest speaker in and they broke down the kingdom of God. And I never really heard the kingdom of God preached like that. So I was like, I mean, tell me about that. I've never really heard this. I've asked a lot of people that, that I've served under, like, can you explain the kingdom of God? And nobody's ever explained it. And he broke it down. We have to be willing to learn. When you continually put your heart and mind in the place to learn, you can have bigger expectations. Um, I had a pastor call me one time. Had a little bitty church. Little bitty church. I never even heard of the town he was in. He said, I got a little bitty church. I want you to come preach. I know I probably you probably won't come. I said, Pastor, let me ask you a question. What is your expectation for the meetings? Because see, I don't go preach for the money. I want to know where the hunger and the passion for God is at. He said, well, I got a lot of good people in my church that have spouses who aren't serving the Lord. They have prodigal kids. And I, I just, I have an expectation that as this revival continues, they'll come in and get Something happened. It's okay. So I went, never heard of this town. This, 
You go to nowhere, take a right, go about 20 miles, take a left, go about 15 miles, and you're there in the church's parking lot. But abundance for every good work. So I started preaching. Sunday morning was good. Sunday night was good. He said, uh, we, we probably had about 10 more people than I figured would on Sunday night. I said, ooh. On Monday night, the power of God showed up. He said, I tell you what, I wasn't expecting this many people on a Monday. No, never had this many people come on a Monday night. <laughs> it was a small number, okay? It, it, that was, it was great. Tuesday night, power of God. Wednesday night, he said, let's extend this thing. I said, let's do it. So we did on thir Thursday night, we had twice as many uh, as we did on Sunday morning. And on Friday night, we had about two and a half as many times as many people on um Sunday morning. Besides, I felt the Lord on it. Do you know why I went to that church? Because it had high expectations. I mean, I've had really good conferences ask me to speak. I remember one time, I got off of a phone crying. My heart was broken. I asked the guy, I said, why do you want me to come speak? Like, I mean, what's your expectation? Woo, I want a bunch of people here. Man, I tell you what. I had some people come against me in ministry, and I wanted to show them that I could host a big event, and I did this, and I, and I, and I'm like, boy, you, I never heard so many eyes in my life. I want to book the, this worship band, and I want to book these preachers, and I want, I said, man, look, I, I'm sorry. I, I just don't feel I'm, I'm supposed to be a part of this. That breaks my heart because expectations are not kingdom-centered. When we're kingdom-centered, everything changes. I, Rodney Howard Brown, he said a few times, when, when you don't need anything is when you get everything. You know, my life turned around when I was 40. And one night I said, God, I'm done with, with me. I want to spend the rest of my life doing what you want me to do. I, I have no agenda anymore. <laughs> I have no agenda. I want to do what you want me to do. And ever since then, everything's been increasing. And it hasn't stopped. But I have high expectations for the kingdom of God and what God wants to do in the kingdom. It's Ephesians 6.10 in the Passion. It says, stand victorious with your life union with your Lord Jesus Christ so God can do an explosive work in you first. Always understand that. The work starts within you so he can do it through you. Always have high expectations that God is going to do a big work in you. Then he'll turn around and do it through you, okay? So... Pray big, my friends. If y'all need prayer, go to the website, jojodawson.net. Send me a prayer request. I would absolutely love to pray for you. Hey, keep those high expectations. And if you're believing for a healing, please keep believing. Send me a prayer request. I want to pray. If you're believing for a prodigal to come home, please send me a prayer request. Keep believing. I want to pray with you, okay? Love you guys. Have a great day.